Nick, let's go live to Angus Taylor, the Shadow Treasurer, speaking in Sydney. Target range than we were yesterday. Uh, we need to see a sustainable reduction in prices if we're to see interest rate cuts, and we're going to see uh, if we're going to see the restoration of standard of living for Australians that we all want to see. Now, it's important to point out a number of features of uh, the data release that came out today. The first is that trimmed mean is still well ahead or well above the target range. And of course, uh, the Reserve Bank Governor yesterday pointed out very clearly uh, that she will see through uh, any unsustainable reduction in prices to the sustained uh, impact on prices, and that means she'll be looking at very closely, no doubt, and the board will be looking very closely at trim mean, which is still well above target. Services inflation is still running at three times goods inflation, and services inflation is proving to be very sticky and causing great pain for Australian households right now. Uh, the price they're paying for services across the board, whether it's insurance uh, or other household services, continues, continues to rise at a rapid rate of over 4 per cent, well above the target range. Uh, prices on average have risen by now uh, 10 per cent since Labor came to power. It's 10 per cent more uh, for the average Australian household, but for working families, the cost of living has gone up now by over 18 per cent. And that's 18 per cent that Australian households we know are clearly struggling to find. It's also, of course, having a, an impact on the cost of doing businesses, and we're seeing record levels of insolvencies uh, right now. Uh, I'll also highlight that underlying electricity prices did not fall uh, in this month. Uh, and this is, this is crucially important. As I said, the Reserve Bank Governor pointed out yesterday that what we need to see is sustained reductions in prices, not temporary. Um, and indeed, the underlying electricity price didn't move this quarter. And we know that there will have to be a surge in electricity prices next year uh, when the government's temporary changes come to an end. We've now seen six consecutive quarters of negative GDP per capita, six consecutive quarters of household recession at exactly the time when we've seen a rapid escalation in Australian households' cost of living. Uh, they're obviously paying uh, much higher mortgage costs, they're paying much higher prices for everything they buy, and, and of course we're seeing uh, taxes being paid at a much higher level than they were two years ago. The result of all of that is that we've seen Australian standard of living being smashed in the last two years. It's, it's a disastrous outcome for Australian households um, and uh, indeed uh, around a 9% reduction in real disposable incomes in, in, the, last, in the last two years. Uh, Australia remains close to the back of the pack in dealing with our core inflation. Our core inflation is higher than every other advanced country, peer country in the world, uh, other than the UK, and that's not one I'd be wanting to compare myself with just now. Uh, now, we, we know the answer to this is to get back to basics. Uh, it is making sure that our immigration policy is in line with our housing supply, and of course the Reserve Bank statement yesterday highlighted uh, the role of immigration uh, in in rising prices, uh, making sure our energy policy gives us sustained reductions in electricity prices, dealing with the source of the problem, not just the symptoms, that our workplaces are good for both workers and employers, getting back to that enterprise level uh, relationship and bargaining that we know is so crucial to get. The Shadow Treasurer there will get uh, back to him when he takes some questions.